With all the excitement of that night, Sniff decided not to go home and was sharing Moomin's bed. Snuffkin, as always, preferred to sleep in his tent. You remember what happened? The horrible groke coming after Thingamy and Bob and everything freezing? For Moomin, however, the night wasn't quite over yet. Good morning, Moomin. Is Sniff up yet? Ha, you're joking. Where are Thingamy and Bob? They haven't stirred yet. The poor things are tired out. Papa's not still asleep, is he? No, he's looking at my rose bushes. Are they okay, Papa? No, frozen to death. And look. What? That's where she was standing, over there where the grass is dead. She must have been real cold to freeze the roses. What a shame. They were very pretty. Well, there's not much left of them now. We'll have to grow some new ones. I dreamed that she was chasing me, Papa. Oh, don't worry, Moomin. I think she's only after thing of me and Bob. So they're not fugitives from justice after all. I have a feeling that they would prefer that, Moomin. Aren't Thingamy and Bob coming down? They asked if they could have breakfast in their room, if you didn't mind. Well, what did they tell you? What? About why the Groke is chasing them. Oh, they just looked terrified and wouldn't say anything about her at all. You know, we really ought to find out why. Yes, you're right. Mum and Mama, why don't you take their breakfast up and see if they'll tell you anything. If any of us can get it out of them, you can. It's only me. I've brought you both a nice breakfast. Well, what did they say? It seems that the Groke is after the suitcase, not them. I wonder what's in it. Perhaps they've stolen her money as well. And they also said that it did used to belong to her. Oh, dear. If they've stolen it, uh... I don't know about that. I asked them how they got it, but they wouldn't say another word. Well, this is too much. We could be harboring criminals. I know they don't look like it, but you never know, do you? Hmm? You can ask the girl! Shh! Don't shout. No, that's no good. We, we, we don't want her coming back here, most definitely. Let's ask the police inspector to question them. We don't want to get the police involved. Will you suggest something, then? Quit shouting, Sniff. Look, why don't you just wait for them to tell you, Moomin? I know it seems strange, but I've noticed that if you pretend not to be interested, People can't wait to tell you their secrets. They told Mama about the suitcase, but they wouldn't say anything to Papa. You know something, Moomin? They might open up to Snork Maiden. She's someone more their own age. You could be right. Hey, Snork Maiden! Where are you going? Moomin House. I'll come with you. But I thought you were living there. 
I was until Mumble came back yesterday. How is she? Bossy, and she snores too. Moomin! Snork Maiden! Where are you off to? Well, I was just on my way to see you. Oh, that's so nice, and I've come to see you, Moomin. I brought you a little present, Moomin. A present for me? Yes, and it's very beautiful. What is it? Something you must never break or lose. I promise I won't. There you are. Thank you. Go on, open it. Mm. Oh, what a beautiful shell. I spent all of yesterday on the beach searching for it, just for you. Look, we can see ourselves in it. So we can. Thank you very much, Snork Maiden. It's my heart, and I want you to look after it. Oh, I will, Snork Maiden, I will. I'll think of you whenever I look at it. Oh, Moomin. I promise you that I'll always kiss the shell before I go to sleep. It will be my most precious treasure. Apart from me? So what shall I do? Take them for a walk? Yes, but take your time and don't rush them. I'll let them cry on my shoulder. Yes, uh, try and talk to them as well, though. I feel very important and a little bit nervous, too. Have some tea first. Thank you, Moom and Mama. We don't need your help, little Mai. Ha, huh, that's what you think. I'd be able to wheedle out their secrets. It's not an interrogation. We only want to talk to them, you know. So you can wheedle out their secrets. I'll be very quiet. Little Mai, have you ever managed to be very quiet? Not really, but there's only one way to find out. You must let me go with Snork Maiden. No, this situation needs a tender understanding woman. That's me, exactly! You ready? I suppose so. Hello, it's Moomin. Can I talk to you for a minute? Hello? Uh, this is Snork Maiden. She's a very good friend of mine. Hello, I'm very happy to meet you both. She's very tender and understanding, and she'd like to talk to you. Can she come in? Well, if she has to, Moomin. It's very beautiful, a perfect heart shape. I've never seen anything like it, Moomin. Would you like one, Mama? No, my dear, there should only be one shell like this. Then would you keep it somewhere safe for me? Oh, Snuffkin. I'm sure a Snork Maiden will get it out of him. I do hope so. I think they liked her anyway. I have a feeling in my bones that Groke will be back tonight. Oh. If we could find out why she's after them, we'd know what to do. Mama won't have any garden left if that monster comes back every night. Moomin. Hmm? <gasps> well done, Snork Maiden. Little Mai! Oh no, she'll ruin everything if we don't stop her. If you interfere, little Mai, I'll never forgive you. What? Interfere? Me? Never. Look, let's just leave it up to Snork Maiden now, little Mai. You'll need me if Snork Maiden's not tender and understanding enough. Hey, Moomin! <laughs> So, how is Snork Maiden getting on? Uh, taking them for a stroll, has she? Where are they? <laughs> if we were nearer... Papa, if we get much closer... And the last thing we want is for them to see us. Looks like I'll have to go and talk to them. You're all too big. I'll come back later and tell you what they said. No, don't. You'll upset Snork Maiden. You're the one who's upsetting her! Shh! All right. Can I ask you again about the suitcase? Yes! yes. Does that suitcase belong to you, or is it the Grokes? No. Yes. No. Yes.
Let's try it another way. Whose is that suitcase? It's, it's ours. ours. It's, it's ours. ours. But you told Moom and Mama that it wasn't yours. It was the Grokes. Yes, yes we, we did. did. Oh. Do you mind if I ask you one more time? Please, Please do. do. Right. Here we go. Now all I want is a simple yes or no. Is that suitcase yours or not? Yes. No, no. yes. Oh. Oh. Wow. Take your time, Snork Maiden, and don't rush them, he said. What, what was that, that Snork Maiden? Look, I'm sorry, but can I ask you again? Yes, yes as many, many times, times as you want. want. Thank you. This is the very last time, so please tell me the truth. Now then, the suitcase. Yes. You know which one? Yes. Does it belong to you? Yes, yes it, it does. does. So it's not the Grokes. Yes, yes, it is, it is not, not the, the Grokes. Grokes. At last, we're getting somewhere. Praise the Booble. We're, we're very, very happy, happy for you. you. Snork Maiden is really having to work hard. I wouldn't have. I'd scare them into talking. You should have let me go. Yeah, but we wanted someone gentle. Snork Maiden is nice. Everybody in this house is nice. Do you think they'd let us stay here forever? Of course, if we can keep away from the Grok. <laughs> It took a long time, but in the end they trusted me, and now we're good friends. Who wouldn't trust you and want to be good friends? Thank you. It wasn't easy, though. They kept speaking together and all got rather muddled. But they did tell me something. Ha! Huh, rather muddled. I told you guys you should have let me do it. Oh, I'm afraid I didn't get very much, though. I knew you wouldn't. So, uh, what did you find out then, Snork Maiden? Huh? Tell us. Well... First of all, the suitcase does seem to be theirs. That was one thing they made very clear. Then how can the Grok... Just a minute, Moomin. What's in the suitcase, on the other hand, belongs to the Grok. That's the problem. Oh, dear. So they do have something belonging to a... Oh. Well, Snork Maiden, what is it? They wouldn't tell me what it is, little Mai. Only that it is the most beautiful thing in the world. Oh, is it? I wonder... <laughs> This is very difficult to understand. I mean, Thingamy and Bob don't look like thieves at all, do they? So, the Grok just wanted back what is hers. I don't see how that big, ugly monster could own the most beautiful thing in the world. Well, what they said was that she just happened to have it. They didn't say whether it belonged to her or not. So she might have stolen it herself. They shouldn't have taken it, though. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Bob and Thingamy are very frightened of how she'll take her revenge if she catches them. But they're very determined to keep what's in the suitcase, Moomin Papa. Oh, this is a fine mess indeed. The Grok is sure to come back tonight. What can we do? What can we do? What can we do? We can do the same as before. Yeah, but it's not fair to drive her away if what's in the suitcase really does belong to her. She means to get the suitcase, and I don't think it will be so easy to get rid of her this time. And if she stays, we'll have a never-ending winter. Well, I'll cover up the petunias just in case. Are you all going to stay here? I'll look after Snork. I will, Moom and Mama. I'll stay. You'll stay, won't you, Snufkin? Don't look so glum, everyone. I've got an idea. But it would help if we knew what was in that suitcase. But even if we didn't, it could still work. Uh, what is it, dear? Just wait, Papa. You'll see.
Oh, I hope Mom and Papa can do something. It's your goal, little Ma. Yes, I know. There's the king and the queen. Uh, this one... Uh... Oh, 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 she's coming. Just when I was winning. You better hide under the table, little Mai. Don't be stupid. How can I hit her with my rolling pin from there? Where is she, Papa? Exactly where she was yesterday. I'll go for her toes, all right, Papa? Let me go first, and then the rest of you can fan out behind me. <laughs> Moom and Mama. What is it, Papa? Perhaps now's the time to tell us your idea. We, we haven't long. <laughs> Wait, uh, Groak, <laughs> don't go away. Uh, we want to talk to you. <laughs> we know that you've come back to get what Thingamy and Bob took from you. <laughs> That, that is right, isn't it, huh? Won't you let them keep it, uh, perhaps? <laughs> no, uh, will you sell it to them? Oh, dear. I have some very beautiful things here in my bag. Maybe you'd like to trade, Groak. What about this pendant? Isn't it lovely? So, you don't like that. Uh, what about this, then? Uh, or this? Oh. All right. Why don't you choose? Take anything you want from my handbag, except the hair slide. Which one do you want? This one? Let me see. Or this? Oh, this one? Oh dear, that's not really mine to give to you. Snork Maiden gave that to Moomin. Is it all right if I give the shell to her, Moomin? Oh! Mama, you leave her alone! Are you all right? Yes, my hand was suddenly frozen. Now you've got the shell, Mrs. Groak. Do you promise not to come back anymore? Cause I'll get you if you do! That was a close thing. I'm glad that's over. <laughs> oh, you are marvelous, Mama. I'm so sorry, Moomin. I forgot that I had put your precious shell in my handbag to keep it safe. It's all right, Mama. You gave it in a good cause. What's Snork Maiden gonna say, Moomin? What? I heard you. You said you'd never go to sleep without kissing it. Or something equally stupid. Well, I'm not going to tell Snorty Maiden, but I think Mama did the right thing. She'll find out. I'm fed up with secrets. I'm always going to tell the truth from now on, no matter what. Oh! <laughs> Moomin, Moomin! Look, I found one. Really? Well, it's very similar, but the one Snort Maiden gave me was much bigger. Oh, a lot bigger, was it? Moomin had decided that he had to find a shell that was exactly the same as the one Snork Maiden had given him. Then, with luck, she would never find out what he'd done with it.
nothing short of a miracle, isn't it? But then in Moomin Valley, miracles do happen. Are you going out? Yes, for a walk. We'll have fun. It seems that Thingamy and Bob are well and truly part of Moomin House now. Luckily, they don't eat a lot and are small enough to find the pencils that fall between the floorboards in the porch. Nobody would ever find it here. Come on, Bob. Let's go get the suitcase then. Are you sure it's not safer in our room? What would you say if someone went in when we weren't there? You wouldn't like it, would you? I think the Moomins are much too nice to do anything like that. It's not them. It's the guests I'm thinking about. You know the Moomins let anybody stay. Snork Maiden! You lied to me, little Mai. Who, me? Moomin still has the shell that I gave him, but you said that he didn't. Impossible! Moomin Mama gave it to the Grok. I was there when she did it. Look, I saw it. He showed it to me. Are you really sure? Was it the same one? Of course it was. I'm not stupid, you know. That's very odd. I saw her do it with my own eyes. Well, I'll go and ask Moomin right now, little Mai. It's a bit awkward, but if I'm going to be honest, Snork Maiden... What? Well, I've decided that from now on, I'm only going to tell the truth. Oh, yes. And I found something you might be interested in. Well, what is it? Mumble and I were down on the beach yesterday, and you remember all those things we found washed up by the storm? Do you mean on the Hattie Fattner's Island that we sailed to? Yes. And do you remember the figurehead that Moomin liked best of all? You know, the lady made of wood and painted. She was really lovely, wasn't she? Yes, I remember. Moomin wanted to keep it. So what about it? Well, it's here on the beach. It was still the same. As beautiful as ever. Was it the same one? Yes, I remember her pretty face. No legs, though. She's just a silly wooden doll. Oh, I know that. But she's got those gorgeous eyes and lovely long hair. Little Mai, why all this fuss about this silly figurehead? Trust him. Only someone as stupid as Moomin can fall in love with a figurehead. He's probably still dreaming about her every night. <gasps> Do you think it's still there? Sure, Snork Maiden, if no one else has found her already. Do you think the ocean might come and wash her away again? Why all these silly questions, Snork Maiden? Moomin would go and rescue her if he knew. So? That would be terrible. I couldn't bear it at all. I really couldn't. How pathetic. He'll probably take her home and keep her in his room forever. Hmm, I expect she's too big to go through the door. He'll just sit and stare at her with that lovesick look on his face. I know he will. Oh! Where are you going now? I thought you were going to Moomin House. I was, but there's something more important I have to do. Okay, it's clear. Hey, you two, you're not leaving, are you? No, we're just, uh, we're going. Well, why have you got the suitcase then? Look, Moomin, would you help us with something? Of course. Thank you very much, Moomin. Oh, that's okay. It's a bit too big for you to carry. We can take it from here. It's all right. It's not very heavy. Oh, silly me. It wouldn't be a very secret place if I'd seen it, would it? I'll see you later. Don't be too long now. I promise you won't tell anyone, will you? Of course I won't. 
got another one. That's not true! All right, but it would only upset Snork Maiden if she knew, so I'm not going to tell her. You rotten thing! Why don't you just tell me the truth? Because it's a secret. But I want to know, Moomin! Look, Moomin, now why don't you tell me your secret and then I'll tell you mine? What is it? Really very top secret. Go on then, tell me. Tell me yours first. No, you tell me first. I know, let's say them together. All right, ready? One, One two, two three. three. After we Mumble and I went to the, the beach grow. yesterday, and I while we were there, we found something that you liked. Please, so we I found went that to the figurehead beach to look lady for another again. One just like it. What did you say? The figurehead? Yes, by the cave. Wait a minute, you didn't finish telling me your secret. I'll tell you later. That's not fair. You've got to tell me now. Maybe he's looking for shells again. I don't think so. He looks a bit worried to me. Maybe he's lost something important. How much further do we have to go? As far as you can row. We're a long way out already, you know. I want to make sure that the lady will never turn up again. We must go further out. We must be far enough by now. I'm tired. No! The currents could still drag her in from here. Keep going! He looks very unhappy. We've got to cheer him up. But how? There's only one way, Bob. Yes, you're right, thingamy. You don't have to. I'm all right, really. How about this then, Moomin? We're going to show you what's in our suitcase. Come on. <gasps> Would you like that, Moomin? It's very interesting. Oh, my gosh! Will you? <laughs> <laughs> Do you need some help in there? No, I think we can manage. Uh, oh. Open it. Yes, now. One, One two, two, three. three. Oh, gosh. By my tail. Do you like it? Oh, boy, do I like it. Then you're not sad anymore, Moomin? Oh, no. That's good, isn't it? Yes, very good. It was such a beautiful ruby. How it changed color from soft red to sapphire blue and then to pink. One minute it was like a flame leaping out of the center. Then suddenly it was like a blood tulip. It was... Hmm, perhaps that's the king's ruby. It was just beautiful. That's the one the hobgoblin is searching for. <gasps> oh, no. However far away he is, he'll come back on his black panther looking for it. 
and he's sure to find it, because he'll know that Thingamy and Bob have it. First the Grok and now the Hobgoblin. What are we going to do? No more than a week later, and like a bolt from the blue, a real catastrophe hit Moomin Valley. Hmm. No, it's not in the bedroom either. Oh, that's very odd. Where did you see it last? I'm sure it was here somewhere, Papa. Oh, well, perhaps it's in the garden. <laughs> no, I haven't been out here all day. Moom and Mama's handbag is missing, full of useful things like socks and sweets and string. What's the matter, Mama? I can't find my handbag and I'm lost without it. We've looked everywhere. Will I get a reward if I find it, Moom and Mama? Yes, we'll have a big party for everyone with cakes, jelly and everything. And as a special treat, no one has to wash or go to bed early. I'll find it, Mama. No, I will. Moomin, Mama. I've checked the cellar. It's not there. Oh, dear. Where can it be? I haven't been in the cellar for days, so I didn't think it would be there. But thank you, dear Snork. Word got round Moomin Valley of the missing handbag, and soon everyone was helping to look for it. What a lot of people! I wonder what they're looking for. What's everybody looking for? My handbag, Thingamy. The one with the two nice little pockets? Yes, that's the one. It's been missing for days. Will you two help us look? It makes such a lovely place to sleep in, don't you think? Woman Mama looks very sad. Perhaps we'd better give it back. Let's have a party tonight to celebrate the return of Mama's handbag. <laughs> As you all know, this party is in honor of Thingamy and Bob finding Moomin Mama's handbag and to thank everyone who took part in the big search. <laughs> Let's raise our glasses to our heroes. Here's to Thingamy and Bob, who found Moomin Mama's handbag without which Moomin Valley would never be the same again. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> I think Moomin would like to say a few words, uh, Moomin. Uh, we're very pleased that Mama's handbag is back again, and thank you to our northern friends, Thingamy and Bob. In seeing as how this is a very special occasion, and also as a thank you for the party, they have decided to show us what is in their suitcase, and I'm sure you'll all be astounded by what you see. Ha! Come closer, everyone. Now, Thingamy and Bob, are you ready? Ready, everyone? One, One two, two, three! Ooh. How wonderful. I don't know how the Grove could swap that for an old seashell. My, my, that must be the King's Ruby. King's Ruby, I found it! Yes, this is it, the ruby I've sworn to find. Huh? Don't touch it! It's ours! Go away, you nasty! 
nasty hobgoblin. But that king's ruby belongs only to me. No, it doesn't. The Groat gave it to Thingamy and Bob in fair exchange for a heart-shaped shell, Mr. Hobgoblin. Did he say a heart-shaped shell? I think so. Anyway, I saw her give it to them with my own eyes, so it belongs to them, not you. I've spent 300 years, day and night, searching everywhere for this ruby. Well, that's very sad, but it still is. Now then, let's see. Would you exchange the ruby for, say, two diamond mines? No! We don't want anything else! <sighs> <sighs> No, I can't do it. I can't take it by force. It's been so long. What can I do? Would you like some punch? It's very nice. That's very kind of you, Moomin Mama. I haven't had any for 85 years. Ah, oh, quince. That's part of it, Mr. Hobgoblin. Have some more, please. No, thank you. Hobgoblins don't really drink very much. <laughs> well, this is a splendid punch and a splendid party. In return, I shall show you a little magic. I will give out three presents. Now what I can do is grant three wishes, so I want three of you to come forward and make a wish. You're not afraid, are you? Ow, oh, you look old enough not to be frightened, Mr. Hemulin. Just let me think. Oh yes, Mr. Hobgoblin, I broke the spade I borrowed from Moomin Papa. No, Mr. Hamelin, if I make a proper wish. <laughs> I would like a new spade, if you please. Very well, here you are. Oh. oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Hobgoblin. Here you are, Moomin Papa. Right. Who's next? Excuse me. Yes, and what can I do for you, young lady? Well, I'm afraid it might be a little difficult. Ah, uh, for me? Hmm, is that really what you want? Please. All right, then, close your eyes. Your wish has now come true, young lady. Oh! Oh, Snork Maiden! Oh, snork Maiden! I wanted eyes like that wooden lady you think is so beautiful. Do you think I'm beautiful now, Moomin? W well, I, uh, well, um... Give me a mirror, someone. They're quite nice, really. I'm sorry, but I can only grant one wish per person. Oh, that's really mean. Oh, please. <laughs> Mr. Hobgoblin, can I make a wish now? Certainly. A golden chariot, a rock crystal goblet, anything at all. A sack full of gold coins. You can be rich, Moomin. Really rich. I'm sorry, but Moomin's is the last wish. I know. Why don't you ask for two sackfuls of gold, Moomin? Then we can have one each. What do you think? No, Sniff. I know what I'm going to wish. Moomin? Mr. Hobgoblin, please change Snork Maiden's eyes back to her own. <gasps> Never mind her. She can see all right. Get the gold coins. The wish is made and fulfilled. There you are. Have a look. Oh. Now, next time... Think before you make a wish. Moomin. Hmm. Mr. Hobgoblin? Yes, Thingamy? If you can grant wishes like that, why don't you make a wish for yourself? I'm afraid my magic only works for other people. Mr. Hobgoblin, can we make a wish for you then? Please say we can, please. I suppose so. Oh, please, it's important. Very well, as it is not for you. We wish for a ruby just like yours. You shall have it. This is for you, Hobgoblin. Oh, thank you. Thank you.
And so that was how, after 300 years, the hobgoblin search came to an end, and Moomin Valley had never had such a celebration. Everyone was happy, except possibly Sniff, who would have quite liked a sack full of gold coins. since lunchtime, and Moomin and his friends had spent all afternoon in Moomin House, waiting for the sun to come out. So, Two Tiggy's arrival was very welcome. Good evening, Moomin. Two Tiggy, come in. Mama, Two Tiggy's here. Come on in, Minnie, and meet Moomin. Oh? Is there someone with you? Yes, I brought my friend, Minnie. Minnie? Don't be shy. Well, there's no one there. Yes, there is. You just can't see her. Really? Yes, I'm afraid she's very, very shy. I'll leave the door open for you, Minnie. Come in when you're ready. She'll get soaked if she stays out there. Maybe that doesn't matter very much if you're invisible. Tiki, how nice. What is everyone looking at? About Minnie. You know, sometimes when people are very frightened, they can become invisible to the people around them. Poor Minnie. She's looked after by an aunt who doesn't like her and is really horrible to her and who only does it because she thinks it's her duty. It wouldn't be so bad if she just got mad and yelled at her. But she's cold and sarcastic, which is much worse. She doesn't care if Minnie is unhappy and gives her horrible jobs. What's sarcastic? Uh, let's see. Suppose you tripped and fell over. What would Moom and Mama say? Well, she'd ask me if I'd hurt myself. Yes, well, you're lucky that Moom and Mama is so nice, but a lot of people would be mad at you. Now, this nasty old lady would say, that may be your idea of dancing, but try not to do it when people are eating, please. Gosh, that's horrible. Anyway, she just went on being more and more horrible to her, so that in the end, Minnie was so upset she became invisible, and her aunt said she couldn't be bothered to look after little girls she couldn't see. Poor Minnie. So she asked me to do it. Minnie's still outside. Too nervous to come in. What did you do to this old aunt? I hope you told her she hurt Ninny's feelings. It wouldn't have done any good, not with someone like her. So I took Ninny home. And then, as you're the nicest family I know, I brought her here so you could make her visible again. Well, we're very flattered, of course, too, Dicky, but... Uh... If anyone can do it, you and Moomin Mama can. And Moomin can play with her. Does she talk at all to Tiki? I'm afraid not. Not since she became invisible. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm sure I can think of lots of games, but it'll be hard to play if I can't see her. She'll be really good at hide and seek, though. Oh, it's OK. You'll know where she is because her aunt hung a little bell around her neck. Ah, oh, look, the door's opened. That'll be Ninny. Come in, Nanny. It's all right. Don't be frightened. Come and meet everyone. This is your new home, and this is Moom and Mama, and Moom and Papa. They're both very nice. Hello, I'm Moomin, and these are my friends. We were just having some tea. Would you like some? Oh, that is, if you can drink. Or perhaps I should make some lemonade. 
Well, now, perhaps you'd all like to go back to the table, huh? If you'd care to sit down, then eat. I'm sorry I don't know any more about her, but I'm sure that everything will be okay now she's here. I'm certain it will. We'll do our best, Tutiki. Here you are, Nimi. Ah. Well, she seems to be okay now, so I'd better be getting along. I've got a lot of things to do. I'll try and come over to see how you're all going. That would really be nice. What's oh. the matter? You have got room, haven't you? Didn't you have someone else, Stan? Ah, yes. Uh, thing of me and Bob, but it's all right. They left last week. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, then. Oh, you must have been thirsty. Would you like some more? You sure? Are you coming up with me? That's nice, Nimi. This is your very own room. You'll be warm and cozy here. I've put the lemonade on the table so you can have a drink whenever you want. Are you sure you wouldn't like something to eat? Ah, I see. You want to go to bed. Well, you had a busy day, so you must be tired out. And don't forget, if you feel frightened or lonely during the night, just come and wake me up and we'll have a talk. If you like, you can tinkle your little bell in my ear and that should do it, Nanny dear. Sweet dreams. Sleep well. Asleep? Yes. Hmm. I was wondering whether there's anything that might help her in your granny's book of household remedies. I don't know if there's a cure for invisibility. I can't remember, but I'll have a look. There's a remedy for most things. I'm a firm believer in granny's remedies. I know you are, dear. I'll go and see. I wonder what she looks like. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, there it is. Now then, droopy tail, evil eye, melancholy. Ah, this must be it. The prescription was at the end of the book and shakily written, but it looked like the right one. It said, Remedy for when people start getting misty and difficult to see. It was very complicated. Do you think it's going to work, Mama? Granny's remedies usually do, so don't worry. Yes, you're right. I wonder whether we ought to go and wake her up. Oh, oh. Look, you can see Nanny's shoes. Papa! Papa! Oh, good morning, little Mai. Is Ninny up yet? Yes, yeah, she is. Where is she? She hasn't eaten yet, has she? I don't know, and she's probably in the dining room. Oh, no! Hmm? I'm too late! I 
be quiet, you two. Minnie's just finishing her breakfast. Come on, drink it all up. That's good. It should start to work in a couple of hours. Well done, Minnie. Look, her shoes are floating. <laughs> yeah, and soon we'll be seeing the rest of her. Ha, they look silly. I think they're very nice feet. I know Moom and Mama's remedies are good, but I can't see them working that fast. Anyway, you must look pretty bad if you want to make yourself invisible. Don't let little Mai upset you, Ninny. It's only the way she talks. She doesn't mean it. Oh, yes, I do. I'm bored, Moomin. Well, what shall we do then, Moomin? I don't know. Let's go mushroom picking. That's boring. I never find any. Well, I do. Would you like to come, Ninny? Good. And we can see who can pick the most, shall we? They all look the same to me, so you'll have to tell me which ones are safe to eat. I'll tell you. Papa! Papa! Look, Papa, you can see Nanny's shoes now. Oh, that's good. There's not many things Mama's potions won't cure. Oh, it can't be that. She only took it a minute ago. Well, it might be that it works faster if you're completely invisible. I think it's being away from that horrid ant. Yes, it could be. Mama, we're taking Nanny mushroom picking. Have a nice time. Morning! Oh, morning! morning. Ah. <laughs> Hello! Where's Ninny? Mushrooms. You seem to know where to find all the best ones, Nanny. It's not fair. I haven't got half as many. How are you doing, Moomin? <gasps> wow, that must be about four times as many as I've got. Uh, uh, yeah, that's right. You've never picked that many before. You know, Moomin, I think there's something fishy about this. Uh-huh, so they're not yours at all. Well, not really, no. Minnie's enjoyed herself. I bet her yucky old aunt never let her go mushroom picking. She was probably only allowed to carry the baskets, the really heavy ones. Oh, how awful for her. They're stinky. What's he up to now? I'll take care of him. Hello, Moomin. Long time no see. Not long enough. The last time you dipped my swimming shorts in glue. Ah, <laughs> you know, I thought that was very funny. Hey, what's that basket floating around up there for? I don't want to be rude, but mind your own business. It looks like the hobgoblins work. Boy, just think of all the things you could do if you were invisible. Ninny, I'll carry your basket. Let's go. It stinks here. Hey, you! Is Nimi a name or just a description? What's wrong? Is your voice invisible, too? Please stop it, Stinky. Can't you see you're frightening her? Oh, it's a girl, is it? Why doesn't she speak for herself? Is she stupid? What a perfect name for her, Nimi. Now look, Stinky. Oh, yes, Moomin. Now look what? You stop upsetting Nimi or, or I'll get really angry. Without those feet, she'd be perfect for a bank robbery. Well, she's getting visible again, so she'll be no good to you at all, Stinky. You couldn't see any of her yesterday, not even the feet. Oh, oh. They're disappearing again. All you have to do is scare her a bit. Oh. Oh. See, she's gone. <laughs> it's all your fault, Stinky. Yes, and like I told you before, she'd make a brilliant bank robber. Don't you agree? Perfect. <laughs> Minnie would never do such a thing as that. And anyway, Mama's given her one of Granny's magic remedies. She'll soon be visible again, so there. Who 
whose basket is this? Mine and Little Mice. Well, there's not many of them, but they certainly are pretty. There weren't many left for us to get, because Ninny has picked them all. It doesn't really matter how many you've got, because you can't eat them. Let me show you. Now, this is Deadly Tufted Toadstool, and this is Cow's Bane. You must remember what they look like. Ah, these are Moomins and Sniffs, I should think. We didn't pick any poisonous ones. Not quite as many as Snork Maiden and Little Mai, but this is Spotty Flybane and Insidious Pepper Spunk. And you've both got Cow's Bane, too. You must be more careful. Now, this is better. There's not one mushroom in here that you can't eat. How did Ninny manage to do this all on her own? What a very clever girl she is. Ninny, where are you? Come here a minute. Ninny, didn't you hear? Mama wants you. Ninny, this is a beautiful mushroom basket. We'll have a feast tonight. Her feet have come back. Oh, I'm so glad. We'll soon be able to see your face. It won't take long at all, Ninny. And you mustn't worry about Stinky one little bit. He's all talk. If something upsets you, just think of something else. At least that's my philosophy in life. <laughs> if somebody upsets you, ignore him. That's my philosophy, Ninny. Anyone who picks mushrooms like this deserves to be seen. You mustn't let anything frighten you when you're with us. Do you understand? <gasps> huh? Come on, everybody's waiting to see you. That's just great, Ninny. Oh, that's wonderful, Ninny, wonderful. I can't wait to see all of you. It won't be long now, but I don't think mouse gray is quite your color, you know. You just sleep as long as you like, Ninny. Good night now. If you want anything, you just shout. Mom and Mama. Well, well, what are you doing? I mean, do you know what time it is? Do you like this, Mom and Papa? Mm, yes, it's very nice. It's good to have someone in the house to make clothes for at last. I hope it'll look pretty on her. What's this for? Her hair. Little Mai, you're very early today. Where's Ninny? Still in bed. You're up early. I can't wait to see her. Come on, then. It's like waiting for Christmas, isn't it? Yeah, and like having presents every day, isn't it, Papa? Well, yeah. I think it's much more exciting this way. We have to wait until she's ready to come down. Did you hear that door opening? She's awake. I hope she found the dress where I left it on the table. Oh, good. It's 
all right. Now you know where to look. Well, she's okay, I suppose. Thank you all very much for everything. Oh. Ha! So she can talk! They still couldn't see Nini's face, but at least they knew that she was there and that she was talking to them. It made them all feel a lot better. Story Maiden, look! became invisible because of her sarcastic aunt, was now visible up to the neck. But no matter how much of Granny's remedy she took or how nice the movements were to her, her head still remained invisible. That's the invisible child. I wonder what she really looks like. Oh, well, good morning, everybody. Morning, Lazy Bones. We've been up for hours and hours. We're going to play hide-and-seek in the woods. Great. Nini, are you all right? Yes, thanks. Mm, this is dumb. If I could see your face, I wouldn't have to ask. Doesn't help with you, Sniff. You always ask silly questions. It's a bit big for hide-and-seek, isn't it? But that's what's so good about it. Okay, this is a good place to start, but we've got a new rule for the game. Once you've found somewhere to hide, you've got to stay in the same place. No moving about anyone. Do you understand, Nini? Right, you're to go first, Sniff. Huh? Why is it always me first? We'll have a practice for Nini's sake. Show her what to do. Uh, hide and seek is an easy game. Not for Nini, it isn't. She's never played it before. What? Never ever? No, and not just hide and seek. She hasn't played any games at all. Not even when she was visible? No, nothing. Oh, that's terrible. So, will you go first? No, I won't. Oh, okay. I'll go first, then. I'll count to ten slowly, so you'll have plenty of time to find somewhere. One, two, three. Go on, Nini. Hurry up. Four. Five. I can still see you. Six! Bush over there, he'll never find you. I'm coming. Thank you. Ouch, 
my tail. Got you, Sniff. Where Ninny's hiding. Oh, look. Oh! <laughs> Come out, Ninny. I've got you. That was a good place, but I saw your ribbon. Oh! Now for Snort Maiden. She's always easy to find. Only because she wants to be found. Found you, Snork Maiden. One, <laughs> two. a good place. Just come with your Uncle Stinky. Now, don't worry. No one will find you there. It opens out once you're inside. Come on. It's a bit steep. I'll help you. Keep you quiet. You're a bit too visible at the moment. Oh, well, let me out. But I'm sure if you stay here until tomorrow, no one will see you at all. <laughs> oh, please don't leave me here. Please. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Now tomorrow we'll hit the bank. <laughs> glad I thought of bringing Ninny here. It's nice to have her here, Tutiki. She's no trouble at all. You're all pretty eccentric, and it might be just what she needs to make her want to be seen again. Oh, and you're very kind, of course. Well, thank you. I think, uh, I, I suppose we should be flattered, shouldn't we? Oh, yes, definitely. She started to talk, but her voice is very weak. You have to listen very carefully. Has it always been like that, or just since she was invisible? I'm not sure. I don't think it was like that before. Mm, lots of people manage very well without using their heads, so I'm certain Nini will be all right. Yes, and I'm glad she's got Moomin and the others to play with. She's never had anybody before, you know. I think she'd find it a bit difficult to ticky. Well, Moomin, Mama, I think that all she needs is something to shock her out of it. Ah, got you, little my. Oh, that bush was too prickly anyway. I expect I'm the last one, hey? No, I haven't found Ninny yet. Ninny? I didn't think Ninny would hide so well. Any luck, Sniff? There's nowhere else to look, Moomin. Perhaps she's lost or fallen or hurt herself. Uh, I've looked absolutely everywhere. I bet she's invisible again. That's why I can't find her. I bet Sniff hasn't looked everywhere. She can't be far. Do you know where she is, Moomin? No, I haven't seen her at all. Not since we started. Ninny! Come on, we're going home! We finished playing! Ninny! Ninny! Oh, my goodness, Ninny! where could she be? Ninny! It's your turn, Sniff, so you've got to find Ninny! her. Not once the game's Ninny! over, I haven't. 
Never mind, we'll all look. We must find her. We are supposed to be looking after her, you know? Uh, oh, come on, Nene. The game's over. We finished. Nene! 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 Hurry up! We're going home Nene! for cookies and lemonade! Nene! Nene! supposed to come this far, Snork Maiden. She might be really lost or frightened or anything. Ninny! Where are you, Ninny? Can you hear me? Ninny! Help! I'm over here! <gasps> Did you hear something? I'm not sure. Help! Help! I'm here! <laughs> That's her! She's not far away. Ninny! Where are you? Here, behind this rock. Where's her voice coming from? That way, I think. Nanny, I can't hear what you're saying. Try and shout a bit louder. I'm over here, over here, behind the rock. I still can't hear her properly. Louder, Nanny, louder. Behind the rock. Which rock? Over here, the big rock. Over there. I've never shouted so much in my life. Nanny! Nanny, are you behind this rock, Nanny? Yes, Stinky blocked the cave with it. Don't worry, we'll get you out. Hang on! <sighs> are you all right, Nanny? Thank you, Moomin. Oh, thank you. Your voice seems to be... Oh, what? Oh, nothing. Try and hold on to me and, uh, and I'll pull you out. Oh, thank you. <sighs> hey, what's happened? Where'd you find her? In the cave. Wow, what a brilliant hiding place. How'd you find it? <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong? Did I say something funny? That was very mean of Stinky. It's a clever idea, though. I mean, to use it for a bank robbery. Oh, Papa! Oh, I know Stinky shouldn't have done it, and it must have been a nasty shock being trapped in the dark in that cave. But no real harm came to her, and she didn't disappear, and her voice got much stronger. Because she yelled so loud. Oh, goodness, did you, dear? Yes, Moom and Mama. Boom and told me to yell loudly so he'd know where I was. And it was loud, too. Good for you, Ninny. It's surprising the things you can do if you have to. And you ought to remember that people who speak loudly are usually very noticeable. <laughs> Go on, yell. I want to see it. That's a good idea, Ninny. If shouting brought back your voice, you never know. It might be just what's needed to make the rest of you visible. Try and get angry as well. Yeah, that's easy. Just think about Stinky. Yeah, and how horrible he is. That should make you angry. Very angry. <laughs> Just you wait, Stinky! You can't come faster than me! <laughs> Stinky, wait! We want to talk to you! I don't want to talk to you! Oh. <laughs> Are you all right, Sniff? <laughs> you can't get away, Stinky. The forest is my home ground! You won't catch me in here! <laughs> You can't do this to me! We're only doing what you did to Ninny. Now look, I needed her to help me. I did, I tell you. But she didn't want to, huh? That's why I put her down this hole to change her mind. And scare her so much that she'd become totally invisible again. She had to be invisible for my plan. Now get me out of here. It's all right, Stinky. See you tomorrow. <laughs> you crooks, you thieves. I had such a wonderful plan. Uh, ah, they're spiteful. <laughs> I'll let you in on my...
my next job. But despite all that had happened, Ninny's face was still not to be seen. Then, about ten days later, This weather seems to push the nails out. I haven't seen anyone stare at the sea like Ninny does. Well, maybe she's never seen it before. <laughs> oh, she's crying now. What's the matter? It's the sea. It's far too big. <laughs> you don't have to go on it, you know. Mama, Mama, what's up? Hmm? What's the matter with her? Nothing to worry about. She's never seen the sea before, and she's just surprised at how big it is. Well, there's an awful lot of water, that's for sure. <sighs> Nanny's lucky. I wish there was something to surprise or excite me. Nothing's happened for weeks. Anything would be nice. Mama must be bored. I think you're right. But she never gets bored. Well, she is now. She needs something to happen. I think we should do something to surprise her. Like what? Well, uh, I know what we can do. Well, tell me. We'll creep up behind her and just give her a little push. What, Papa? Push her into the sea? Oh, Papa, you can't. Mama wouldn't like it. Just watch me. But the water's freezing, and Mama will get all wet. We never found the water too cold when we were your age. You young people today have no sense of fun. Did you really used to do things like that? All the time. Papa? Yes, Moomin? Oh, nothing. Don't worry, Moomin. Mama enjoys a prank. She'll find it very funny, I promise. something. Oh, nothing much. Uh, do you know, that child has got the sharpest teeth, with or without a head. Oh, Moomin, Moomin, at last I'm visible again. Promise you won't disappear again? Never, oh, never. Brave girl, and with a good strong set of healthy teeth, too. Oh, I'm so happy, Ninny. Ninny, dear. Moomin, Mama. I'm very glad, too. Oh. Stop laughing, you horrible child, you, you sawtooth monster. <laughs> What's so funny, huh? <laughs> really? 
Nanny laughed. Well, she certainly changed, Moomin Mama. All she needed was to get angry, and she did. I hope Mum and Pop is forgiven, Ninny. Thank you all for taking such good care of her. I hate to say it, but she sounds almost as bad as little Mai now. Toot Tiki! Ninny! And so Ninny left Moomin House with Toot Tiki. Now that she was completely visible and far from timid, she was ready for anything. Anything, that is, except seeing her aunt, she said.